Hey there, SNS crew. If uh, you saw my last video, you would know that I was traveling. And after a long day of traveling, I finally made it to my destination, my parents' house. And uh, today we're going to be showing you how to reload with uh, that handsome fellow over there. If you can't tell, that's my dad. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and let him take it away. So today we're going to do some reloading. Uh, we got some, uh, some brass that's already been shot. Uh, we got some uh, brass cleaning. I, I did these last night. Uh, the brass cleaner I use just regular brass cleaning for your, any casing. What you do is you, a little of this goes a long ways. I usually use some hot water. Warm, hotter, the hotter the water you can get, the better. And just pour a little bit of the solution into the warm water. Take your brass, throw it inside the uh, water. Slosh it around a little bit. Let it sit in there for about, I don't know, five, ten minutes. If you let it sit too long, it will take the coating off of your brass. It could weaken your brass a little bit. Uh, after you uh, get it all cleaned out, drain all the water out of it, I usually stick it in the oven for about, set the oven, preheat the oven about 350 degrees, and after the, the preheat goes off, go ahead and turn the oven off and put all your brass on a, on a cookie sheet. Set it in there and then let it sit in there for about, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes. So get all the, the uh, moisture and stuff out of the side of the brass. So if you don't, so a lot of times if you want to wash these, you get a lot of moisture in your brass, even though maybe when you go pit powder, if you don't put it in there, hit it, you know, you have wet powder and it could cause a malfunction. So that's the reason why I put it in the oven and let it cook. But all my brass has been clean. Uh, with the water and brass cleaner, these all been ovened up. Now we're going to put this brass into a tumbler. This is my automatic tumbler. You can get a Mechabellas uh, or a Bass Pro. Uh, the inside of it is real fine corn cob. You know, it's basically what you do. You know, I can put up to 400 to 500 rounds in here. This is probably about 400 rounds right here. You just pour it in there. And you put the lid back on. Get it real tight on there tight. It might be more than 500, I don't know. <laughs> But what this does is it shines your brass up when it'll look brand new. So we'll put this in here, let it do its thing for five or six hours. pretty good so you got to make sure you have the lid on real tight if not you'll make one heck of a mess like I just did and what it does is it, it just turns all the brass and it shines the brass up real good now like I said I'll let it do that for you know four or five hours and when you get done your brass will come out looking brand new just like that this is good as storm box. A lot of times you guys go to the shooting range if you want to start getting reloading. A lot of times I'll go through a uh, lot of the brass around the shooting range, pick up all the shells that I have, like you know, all the calibers that you have in your gun in your gun safe or you know me. My son will will pick up 243 rounds. My daughter shoots 243. I do a lot of 223s, 308s, 30 out 6, 25 out 6, 270, 270 short bags, and you get a lot of your bigger calibers. As you can see over here on my other side, I got all these dies. You know, this is all every die that I have, I always collect ammo for that die. I haven't bought ammunition probably. 15 years. I do all my own reloading. All my kids know how to do their reloading. It's a very 
fun sport. It is expensive to get uh, get started in, but if you just shoot a thousand rounds to two thousand rounds a year, like I do, you know, in the long run, it does pay off. Uh, I think relo reloading is more accurate than factory ammunition because each bullet is precise by load. Factory ammunition, you know, the powder ranges go up and down. The bullets are a half of it can be off one side on the bullets. Your bullets can be a shoulder difference. There's a lot of different variable things on reloading versus factory ammunition. You got every single bullet. I can go right now and go to Walmart or Cabela's or something, buy a factory box of ammunition, Remington, Federals, uh, Winchester, and I can put a mic on it. Every mic on it would be different. My loads, every bullet is the exact same. Every bullet's got the exact same weight on the bullet, got the exact same grain of powder, exact type of primer, and every bullet casing, shoulders, necks, uh, they're all sized the exact same. And then after I size it, I chamber it per rifle, whatever rifle I have it, I chamber it to fit that actual specific gun. So when you go ahead and if it's a bolt action, you can actually put each bullet in your gun and then set your bolt and that bolt that is the best to customize for that specific rifle. So you'll get better accuracy with that as well. Um, I'm shooting, a lot of times I shoot, uh, sight my guns in about 100, 100 yards for all, all my rifles. I'm in a dime size hole in five shots. If any of you guys have any questions or comments, uh, please reach out and get back with us. I'd love to have the feedback. Uh, we're going to let this go through tonight and uh, let, it die, let it clean up. Tomorrow we'll go ahead and resize them, reprime them, clean all the brass again, wipe all the, make sure we have no corn cobs stuck inside the casing because when you go to resize it, you can put pimples and fun and damage the brass. We'll take an air gun and blow out all the air and stuff. And make sure all the corn cobs, and then we'll go ahead and resize them and trim, re trim them down and reprime them. And then we'll set up the powder machine, re fit uh, powder in them, and then redo the bullets. And we'll have our, every bullet the exact same. Thank you all. Have a good night. If you guys heard it here first, we'll catch you in the morning. Good morning, SNS crew. It is currently time to get a watch. But uh, we let this run all night and they're looking pretty sharp. This is some of them. Brand new, just like my dad said. Take it away. Good morning, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we started, we put these in last night after we went ahead and Put the brass in the uh, cleaning solution, put them in the oven at 350 degrees. Uh, got all the water and stuff out of them. We put them in this corn cob. Uh, just let it vibrate all on. And as you can say, that brass comes out, looks pretty close to brand new looking brass. Uh, I do have some brand new brass here. Box has never been opened, as you can see. They're pretty dang close. I mean, this brass here that's it's probably a couple years old, three or four years old. Uh, some of the brass that uh, we get out the shooting range are kind of old and crusty. Just a little bit of touch up work and they come out looking pretty good. Uh, we're going to take these out, make sure we've got all the corn cobs and stuff out of them. We're going to wipe them down, re oil them, then we'll resize them. So after we get this done, we'll start on the next step. All right, welcome back. Uh, we got all the brass cleaned up. You know, we got all the corn cob out of them. We are going to reload today and resize, reload, deprimer. And uh, this here caliber is a 30 out 6 Springfield. Uh, I'm reloading these shells for my dad. Uh, first off, we're going to do we're going to make sure we have the right die for this particular round. Uh, you can get these dies 
Bass Pro, Cabela's. You got two different sized dies. You got one that's a resizing die, which is this one. It's got the real long with the little nip on the bottom of it. That's for you to prime it and resizing. The resizing on it, it's the bullet goes up in it. This here knocks the primer out. And this is the it's called the neck. This part right here is called the shoulder. When you knock that primer out, it reforms this and crimps that closer so you'll seat your bullet in. And it, re it pulls the shoulder back out for your resizing. And then, of course, it knocks your primer out. So, what we do here is we'll go ahead and set this up. And these are all got adjustables on them, all mine are pretty well set. But if you need to set them, you just undo the Allen screen, undo the Allen wrench uh, screw, and then you can set it by size. What we do here, let's go ahead and set that, let's go all the way down, take a little locking tool, and it doesn't have to be super tight, just snug. <clears throat> now it comes into the reading part. Always have your reloading book. This is safety 101. For every round, for every caliber you all want to use. So we need to find 30 out six Springfield right here. So it goes into your charts and it tells you what your size of your bullet needs to be. That is a 30 out six shell. And it needs to be sized at 24.94. So that being said, you're also going to need a gauge. And I hope my battery's not dead. I think my battery did, bud. Sorry about the short term distance difficulties, but I had a battery that was dead on my mic here. So we got a, right now it's reading zero on there. And I'm going to size this bullet. After it's been shot, it should read longer than what it needs to be sized at. So right now that bullet just a casing is 63.11. Yeah, it's stretched way out. Overall length is supposed to be 23 or tw sorry, 24.94. Hold on, I ain't right. I right on the wrong setting. There you go. Now it's supposed to be 24.83 and it's supposed to size out to 24.94. So it's, it's a little shorter. So now I'm going to stretch it out. As you can see here. So what we're going to do is we're going to lube this baby up. We're going to give it some lube. I usually like to clean this off a little bit. Because it's got a lot of that corn cob and stuff on there. You don't want to get anything on it to uh, to put anything on the shoulders and the necks of the because you get these like corn cobs still stuck on it, it can pimple your brass and it cause failure on your gun or possibly kill you. So we're gonna make sure that this here is all nice and cleaned off. Get a little bit of oil. Of 
just take that just a little bit goes a long ways don't have to overdo it and that helps oils your press going up and down so what that did is it pulled the shoulder up and it also stretches your neck out. As you can see here, I was telling about make sure your brass is good and clean. It put a little pimple in that shoulder brass. That is no good. So that one there can be discharged. Try it again. And you're going to have when you reload when you first start out. You're going to have a little bit of a see that one there went a lot easier. No pimples, no nothing on the brass. Brass looks good. Now we're going to check and see if our dies on right. Okay, so here it says case trim. That's the maximum is 2494 is how maximum you can be. After trimming in your case down, it's 2484. Right now I'm at 2486. That means I have to shave off two thousandths of an inch. Very good. So we know that I can I, this bullet is still good, it's still reusable because I can still trim down. Once it hits that maximum after you resize it, and then you know you can't trim it, it's probably not going to be safe to shoot, so the best thing to do is discharge it. So we'll go ahead and size these here up, and re, we'll go ahead and resize them, and then uh, we'll do about 50 rounds of it, we'll go ahead and resize them, and then after we resize them, and to prime them, we'll go to the next step and show them how to trim them down. Size and deep primed. We're going to go ahead and set up for the uh, trimming process, which we're going to trim them down. And the way we do this here, you got a little trimmer tool here. Uh, we'll get it this set up to where we can start trimming. Each one of these here have a number on them, and that's for the set your thing. Is this here's a number three, and that goes with your die sizes. 
which is your shell holder number three. So we got the number three and number three, so that there matches your shell holder. So when you all start new and different calibers and stuff, once you do your resizing, you want to make sure you have the right shell holder for that, or you won't be able to reach rim your bullets down. Uh, this is a 30 caliber. You have a 30 caliber inserter for your trimmer, and you can see it right there on the thing. It says 30. And they usually come in 22, 25, 24s, 30s, uh, 40s, and 50 cals. And what they do here is you just slide it into the head. And there's a little Allen set screw there. And you just stick it in there nice and tight and do so. Next step is... Go ahead and take your casing. If I go ahead and do my casing, and then see how the, the head of this goes into your bullet, and then you can start trimming it out. I always start just a little bit at a time, and then stop, pull your bullet out, and remeasure. A little trim goes a long ways, guys. It, once you remeasure, I can go down to 2448, and I'm a little under on that one. So we'll set that one off to the side, and this is just to get a little bit of a, of a set point. So I'm right there is 2484.5. I'm a half of a deal off. So I'm just going to do one more turn. A trim. And as you can see, I'm right there. Now. I'm right on that money. I'm gonna take that. On the back side of here, I got an adjuster. See how much gap I got in between here? I'll move that up, to even with the base of this here, so I won't cut over, over or under. So there's a little Allen screw there. I'll loosen that up a little bit. Go ahead and just touch that just a little bit. Slide that back forward. And then I'll use my Allen wrench to tighten your backstop. So that one there is trimmed. We'll check another one just to be for good measure. See, it just trimmed a little bit off and it stopped. That's the reason why we set this up like that. And I'll check it again just to, for good measurements. And as you can see, on the money. And that's what it's supposed to say 2484. And my. Case trim length 2484. So we know that's set, we're good to go. We're gonna go ahead and trim these up for you real quick. We'll measure every one of them. I usually measure them, you know, about every third one out of 50. This trail is 50 rounds. I measure every third one out of 50 just for safe keepings. Sometimes when you're trimming, you get a lot of force sticking back to screw out, but we'll check them. We notice it'll be off a little bit. We'll uh, we'll stop and readjust, but it won't take about ten minutes to do this.
did 50 rounds. We went ahead and re-trimmed them all down. Now we're going to polish them up around the necks and then the, the primer. Also guys, if you guys are out on the shooting range and you're all hurt, collecting brass that other people don't want and throw away, and you, sometimes I, I do it myself as we just found out, uh, some of the brass that we have, like they say, these here are 30-06 shells. And we also had 270 rounds. Yeah, here's 270 rounds. This one here is a 30 out 6 shell casing. This is a 270 shell casing. As you can see, they look exactly the same. That being said, when you go to resize it, you can actually resize a 270 for a 30 out 6. You can actually resize a 25 out 6 to a 30 out 6. Only reason why I've been doing this for a long time, only reason why I knew it was the wrong casing, and because when I went to push down on my resizer, it was a little bit more difficult. So when you guys are getting your brass and stuff, and make sure you got your right calibers, I always keep them stuck. Not saying you can't do it, I just wouldn't recommend doing it. So that being said, we'll just move forward with that. You can resize different shells, but for the extra brass, I wouldn't recommend it because somebody that's in your hunting party or a shooting party or whatever say, hey, yeah, you're shooting a 30 out 6, but your buddy over here has got a 270 and he sees the 270 stamped on the bottom of your casing and it's loaded for a 30 out 6. That can cause a huge problem. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. Uh, just moving forward, we're going to go ahead and just gonna start be burning after we trim it you get a little bit of a rough edge around your around your neck and on the bottom of here you still got a little bit of the debris and stuff in your primer hole so what we usually do is just be a little bit it don't take a whole lot I'm just barely just I'm not even putting any pressure on that I'm just cleaning it out now the primer hole I put a little bit of pressure on it getting good and shiny as you can see it's Still got a little of the residue and gunpowder in there, so I usually really put a little bit of pressure on there. And you can see as, as a little bit of pressure I put on it, it's starting to shine up. And now that hole's good and clean for when you put your primer back in. It'd be a surefire. So we'll go ahead. And, we'll go ahead and do these. Up real quick, you know, we do every one of them. Just this is not a fast process, it's to me, it's kind of relaxing, it's kind of stress free.
Okay, so now we got ahead. <clears throat> we got all these done. As you can see, is all the cases been trimmed down. They've been deburred. The primer hole's been uh, cleaned out really good. Guys, I really want to say, uh, when you guys clean this primer hole out, I highly stress don't overdo it because when if you overdo it and waller out that hole when you go back to reseat your primer, sometimes it won't seat very good and then your primer being there loose and it can cause a misfire. Uh, I've had that happen to me several times for reloading throughout the years I have. And again, I'm no professional. It's just a hobby that me and my kids took up one day. To get into all the reloading stuff, it's, like I said before, it can be expensive, but in the long run, it's very well worth it. You can get online. Back when I bought my reloading stuff, I bought it as a kit. I spent right around $800 to $1,000. They might be cheaper than that now. I haven't priced them, but I bought everything as one complete set. You can probably go online on Amazon now and probably uh, eBay and probably find stuff a lot cheaper. But throughout the years, I just kind of gathered more stuff. Uh, we're getting ready to do the priming now on the bullets. Uh, primers are, I use Winchester primers. I use uh, CCI primers. Uh, primers is kind of more of a preference. Uh, I prefer to use Winchesters if I can find them. Uh, they're a pretty hot primer, but primers are primer. It doesn't really matter. Uh, CCI, I just recently found these ones here. I can't find Winchesters around my area. Uh, they're pretty cheap. They're about a dollar, about a buck fifty, two dollars a box of a hundred. Uh, you also got to remember on your primers, if you're shooting big caliber rifles, you want to use the large primers. Uh, smaller calibers like your 222s, uh, 22250s, uh, 223s, that's a smaller rifle primer. And then also you got your pistol primers. Uh, what we're going to do now is I got me a primer reloader. And, you know, you get 100 rounds in these here. Uh, I got this crate holds 50 rounds, and as you as you open these up, they're they're in little slots of ten in a hole. And I just go over five and just throw them in my hands and reload them up in my primer kit. Always want to make sure there's two sides of a primer. This side here is what you call a flash side. Well, that one's empty. <laughs> we empty that sucker out. As you can see here, that's your primer side, what you see on the bullet. It's what your firing pin goes into your rifle shell casing and discharges your round. The other side here is the flash side. The gold side is the flash side. And that's where all your, your powder discharge goes. You always want to make sure that is going up into the casing side. So we'll go ahead and show you how easy this is. Uh, it's real easy. Just go ahead and discharge them in so that one there's ready to go. Make sure I got the right. So you just slide it in and squeeze. And then it sets it in there just nice and pretty just like that. And you always want to rub your finger on it to make sure it ain't loose or can properly see if you feel like a little bubble on your when you're running it and it's not flat and flush you know you didn't get it seated quite properly but we'll just go through here and it's really fast process and after you do it a while you can pretty much you know get the feel of it I'm, like I said I've been doing this for a while now 
But I just do double check some of them just to make sure. <clears throat> Another thing too guys is uh, a lot of people have asked me throughout the years, hey can you reload any brass or any type of bullet? Yeah you can reload any type of bullet but there are certain casings that you cannot reload. And some of those casings are uh, like the cheap ammunition you buy at like the uh, army surplus stores and stuff like that and you're getting big bulks. If it's not brass or stainless, if it's kind of like that cheap ammunition like Wolf and the stuff like that, no you cannot, re you cannot resize those. They crush the casings, they, they just won't you just can't reload those so it has to be brass brass uh, people's asked me if can you reload the stainless steel casings like this yeah you can reload them these actually hold up better you get more life out of them uh, a lot of the Winchester Supreme boxes that I've bought over the years before I started reloading I've always wanted to get in reloading and I bought these here and I've had a, these probably here for about 20 years and we really load them as much as you can as long as you take care of the brass they should be fine as long as they size out and neck out and, and not damaged they should be pretty decent and actually they do make a pretty nice bullet when they're done All right, now that we got these here done, all the shells and stuff have been primered. So now we're getting ready to go ahead and check our powder charges and our bullets. Okay, again, you guys can go to Bass Pro, Cabela's, or some any type of reloading stores to get your bullets and your powder. Uh, I shoot reload 19, 22, 25, uh, reload 10, uh, 15 reload on your bullet selections is all of a preference and what shoots best for your gun uh, I shoot Hornady through my gun I get these at Bass Pro or Cabela's uh, as you can see here this is a 30 out 6 30 caliber has 150 grain SSTs and the quantity of this box is 100 rounds okay 30 caliber 308 for the price of this box for 100 rounds is $31 plus tax. I don't know about you all, but if you go to Walmart or any outdoors, you're spending around for a box of 20. This was, I don't know how long years ago, it was for a box of 20, it's 22 bucks for 30 out six shells. I'm getting 100 rounds for $31. A powder I buy. I can get about 300 rounds out of this powder for 30 bucks. So $66 for, uh, shoot, I don't know how many rounds, but that's pretty good. So we're going to come over here. I'm going to find, we're going back to the Magic Bible here. Uh, we're in 30 out 6 Springfield, that's what we're reloading. I'm going to go through my ballistic charts. My ballistic charts here, you know, it goes the smallest grain bullet. And it does like, guys, you can get different types of books for different types of brands of ammo. You know, this is Nosler. I got the uh, Spear, Sierra. All that has the same, everything's, all these books are pretty much the same. But different loads have different powder charges. So if you're going to reload a specific type of bullet, get the right books for it. So we're going to go back over here to this book. And I like shooting 150 grain through the 30 out 6. It's a good fast round. It's a pretty accurate round. Uh, a lot of knockdown power. And it doesn't quite do as much as damage as some of the bigger calibers do. So here's my 150 to 155 grain bullet charges. And you got your different types of tiles. You got your uh, 
ballistic tips, you got your SSTs, you got your soft points, and these are all boat tails. You got your full metal jackets, round noses, uh, ballistic tips, soft points, which I think these are the, uh, no, these are the SSTs, as you can see right here. SSTs, and they'll have the uh, red ballistic tips. Uh, these are a good round to shoot. I found out in the past, uh, I'd rather shoot the, uh, on this particular round, I'd rather shoot the SPs or the BTSPs, the ballistic tip soft points. Uh, the STs is a good round, it's a good fast round, but I think they go in and don't mushroom out near as good. But this is what my dad picked out and uh, he's wanting to try these to see for his gun. So this is what he wants. That's what we're really for him. This, that's their ballistic charts. Uh, case overall link is what your bullet should set out at as 32, 30. Now, again, now here's your powder charges. Your powder charges, you know, this is what they recommend for these type of bullets. This is what they think shoots best through whatever type of gun that you're shooting with for what grain of bullet you're shooting. You know, this is 150 to 150 grain. So, like again, I like to shoot reload uh, powder. This one here is called for reloading 15, which I do have. And as you can see over here, you know, I always go for the neck. The red means the hot, the hottest load you can recommend for that bullet, which I always go to the next step down from that. I can reload that and be fine, and it's still pretty, pretty good accurate. But I don't want to load real hot where it can take a chance of melting my barrel down on my rifle or you know more powder means more problems in some cases so I'm gonna go with the reload 15 49 9 grains of powder and that bull is going to be pushing out about 2800 feet per second so that's where we're gonna go so now we're going to set up the powder and get the bullets and stuff signed out. I got to change out my side, my resizing die out to my actual bullet seating die, which we'll go ahead and do that now. And we're going to have to make some changes on the bullet setting die because that round, before the rounds he was using is a little different than what he was using now so there'll be a little bit of uh, adjustments there if you guys do a lot of different uh, ammos and you like shooting different like I like to shoot one ammo but if I'm hunting something different and I like like for my 25 by 6 I like to shoot deer with 25 by 6 but I also like going kind of hunting with my 25 by 6 my 25 by 6 I got two different sets of dies one for a set for a 117 grain bullet, and the other one's shooting for an 87 grain bullet. So I have two different die sets, so I don't have to keep adjusting them. I just mark them on my case, uh, 87 grain or 117 grain. Uh, when you guys switch bullets back and forth, you definitely have to go by the guidelines, and you will have to make adjustments prior to what bullet there is, because that way they're set and seated for that specific gun. But if you find a round that you really like, stick with it. It shoots best through your gun. And it is all variable. You have to play here and there. You know, I got a whole bunch of different bolts over there that I've used and I bought. I'm going to try this one out. And you shot it and then you're like, hmm, I don't like this one. So you went and bought a different round. And then you shot this. This one here was better. This round was better than this round. I mean, you just got to play with your rounds and see what shoots best for your Pacific rifle. Uh, I reloaded this bullet here for my dad and he always used the uh, Nozzlers. He shot Nozzlers for five, six years and had very successful luck with them, but now he can't find that bullet, Pacific bullet no more. 
So now he's missing, he's switching up a little bit. So he's gonna try these. I've actually shot these in my 270 short mag and they were a little bit too much for the gun because there's a lot of powder behind that. But I don't know, we'll see. I think he'll like it, but you never know. If we can find it, if you don't like them, we'll just go back to the other ones if we can find them. But we're gonna go ahead and set up for this here. We're gonna go ahead and get the uh, bullet seat and die, which is this one right here. And again, it's just like the other one, but it doesn't have any primer in it. Uh, this one here is what seats your bullet, you know, on your depth of your bullet. And a lot of times, you know, guys, the idea of this to what, when you first start now on both die sets is just set them in there. And when they're, if they're brand new, you, what you want to do is you want to set it all the way down where it hits the bottom of the thing. Then you just screw it in until it just barely hits. Of course this is already preset, but I'm gonna walk you through it just in case. And there's also other videos out there too that you all can look. So you can see that it's barely touching that. Right in here, it's barely touching. So after you get that, and you can set the lock ring, you know, this turns, but I got a pretty well preset. And then I, it doesn't have to be real tight, just barely snug. So now that's set. Now if I need to make adjustments on my seating my bullets or, or not, that would be a 7 16 wrench and a small straight screwdriver. And it just backs it up or down so you get your bullet where you need to set to match your case overall length. So we're going to go ahead and set the powder machine up and uh, get it all scaled in. Go ahead and turn that baby on. And there's several different types of uh, powder machines. Uh, I have an electronic one. Uh, it's a lot faster. It's digital. Uh, you can switch powders out on it real quick. Real quick. Uh, this is a very expensive product. You know, this did not come with the kit. I ended up buying this separate. The one that came with the kit was a hand measure out. Uh, for the guys, for the money, it's well worth it. Uh, like I said, it's a digital scale. You can recalibrate it uh, with weights if you need to. Very easy to clean. Uh, so we're gonna go with uh, Reload 9, 15, I think it said. Reload 15, 49.9. So I got some older Reload 15 powder here. So I'm gonna go ahead and top this up. Like so. And then I got a brand new one over here in the thing, I do believe. No, I do not. So again. Hmm. I guess we're going to get some reload 15. All right, well, we'll just have to go get some more. That'll be enough to do what we need to do for these 50 rounds. So, we're going to go ahead and close this up a little bit. And we're going to set it 49.9. I typed it in 49.9. And we're going to go ahead and enter and display.
need to get the right nozzle for it. Nozzle for it. That's a 22 progress for a 243. And 30 caliber. So your funnels and stuff, you got different calibers to fit your bullets, so this makes the process a little easier and a little bit faster. You just simple switch that out. I'm always take a rag. And make sure my funnels and stuff are good and clean. Make sure they ain't got no dirt. Make sure they're good and clean. Uh, so we got our first brass. It's all cleaned up, ready to go. It's really easy. You just stick that in there. The bottom, you know, good and tight. There is a rubber seal in there. So it kind of keeps everything. And as you see, it's 49.9. And that is what my book does say. It's 49.9 for reload 15, 49.9 grains of powder. And that's what the powder looks like. It's real fine. Different reload powders. It has finer or not so fine grain. Pour that in there. And then it automatically dispenses your next bullet. Ready to go. So now, here comes the challenging part. We'll see how close or how far we are off. Take your bullet, put it on top of your casing, and go ahead and seat it in. Now, that being said, I got a huge crimp ring right around there. That's telling me that my bullet most likely needs to be set deeper. Fixing to find out. Case overall length is 32.30. And I'm at 32.59. So that needs to go down quite a bit. So, that being said, I have a little wrench around here somewhere. to the trusty old toolbox. Find me a 7 16 inch. And a straight screwdriver. Just crack that down a little bit. And we know the bolt needs to go down. So we're going to just go just a little bit. And then we're going to. Uh, just two ways you can do it. Uh, I prefer to go ahead and do another round. 
and then take my hammer, my bullet pull hammer, and redo it. Because sometimes if you do too much, you could crush your casing if you don't get it set just right. But we're going to try it just to see where we're at. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. There I felt it. I didn't go too much. My casing went down a little bit. I still got a little bit of a crimp, uh, crimping ring there. Got a showing, which is not bad. But we'll see where we're at. And you want to just take it down just a little bit. You don't want to go down too extreme at a time. And we'll... And we went down quite a bit, but still need to go down more. So I'll we'll, we'll take her down just a little bit more. That went down quite a bit. And now you can see that crimp is not, the crimp is not really showing near as much on that. Oops. And we're just about there. We'll take it down just a little bit more and go from there. And these just a little bit just at a time, guys. I mean, don't go all crazy. I mean, it's, it's, it's just baby steps. Because if you go down too much at a time, you can crush your shoulder, then that crush your shoulder on your, on your bullet, and then it's just. Uh, no good, you have to tear the bullet apart and throw that casing away. And you still got a little bit of a crimp ring, crimp ring in there, that you see, but that's that's all right. I prefer to have no crimp rings, but some people are different. Some people like to have a crimp, crimp, uh, crimp ring. I do not. To me, I think it's just... See, I'm at 23... Or 32-23, I need to be 32-20. So, okay, well now we got the bullet set right. As you can see, it's... It's got a good... It has a good crimp on it. You can see the crimp ring just... A little bit which that, that that's to me that's pretty dang close I think it's gonna be a good round it turned out to be a pretty nice bullet we're gonna go ahead and knock these out real quick and we'll do a few more so you all can get a touch based on it uh, a lot of times too after I don't have this particular gun here with me right now a lot of times I will before after I reload, I usually take each load and chamber them to actually crimp the bullet to the gun and actually it will set the bullet to the gun. But I don't have that gun here. Uh, another thing too you all can do if you all have time too as well is you can actually mic your chamber to set your gun inside for that. But. I don't have that gun here with me right at this point in time. Uh, you know, it depends on what your math skills are. If you guys got pretty good math skills, uh, you can do it that way. But I, a lot of times, it's just I'd rather just set the gun bullet in there and then close them, eject the shell out. You can do that to see them. 
make sure everything's going to work properly in the gun. So we're going to go ahead and start reloading some of these up. Again, each powder is going to be the exact same. You know, it's not factory ammunition. This is actually a pretty fast process. Because once this goes, that's done. Other ones, I'm waiting on the other powder to go. So guys, just to uh, give you a, earlier on in the video, they said that, you know, like the copper, uh, the stainless steel bullets, that is a good looking round. I really like the way that looks versus the, the actual brass rounds. I mean, they're both look, good looking bullets, but that copper or that stainless steel casing, that just looks sharp all the way around.